The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered round him and he stayed by the lake side. Then one of the synagogue officials came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him fell at his feet and pleaded with him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is desperately sick. Do come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her life. Jesus went with him and a large crowd followed him. They were pressing all round him. Now there was a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years. After long and painful treatment under various doctors, she had spent all she had without being any the better for it. In fact, she was getting worse. She had heard about Jesus and she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his cloak. If I can touch even his clothes, she had told herself, I shall be well again. And the source of, his, of, her, of the bleeding dried up instantly and she felt in herself that she was cured of her complaint. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned round in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing round you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he continued to look around to see who had done it. Then the woman came forward, frightened and trembling, because she knew what had happened to her, and she fell at his feet and told him the whole truth. My daughter, he said, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace and be free from your complaint. While he was still speaking, some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official to say, Your daughter is dead. Why put the master to any further trouble? But Jesus had overheard this remark of theirs, and he said to the official, Do not be afraid. Only have faith. And he allowed no one to go with him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. So they came to the official's house, and Jesus noticed all the commotion with people weeping and wailing unrestrainedly. He went in and said to them, Why all this emotion, commotion and crying? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. So he turned them all out and taking with him the child's father and mother and his own companions, he went into the place where the child lay. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I tell you to get up. The little girl got up at once and began to walk about, for she was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome with astonishment, and he ordered them strictly not to let anyone know about it, and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, the first reading tells us our God does not take pleasure in the death of his people, does not take pleasure in our suffering. Why? Because he cares and loves for us. And he demonstrated this truth by two episodes in today's gospel. The first is Jairus, and the other, the woman with hemorrhage. All of us here, all of us here, <coughs> we are not well sometimes. We may be sick. We may have some health issues. And we desire to get healed. Anyone, anyone here don't desire to get healed? Sure, all of us want to get healed. And so that is a human, a human aspiration to get healed. Now, that aspiration for this today's episode in the first instance of the woman with hemorrhage, she not only had a human aspiration but she had courage, she was courageous 
in her faith. The scripture tells us she was filled with crowd. There was a big crowd around her. Very big crowd. Let us visualize the scene at that place. Probably more men than women in the Jewish context. And she may be a fragile woman because she was sick for 12 years. And so she was trying to reach out to Jesus must be the center where everybody has crowded around him. How to go? How to touch him? So she wished, if only I can touch the hem of his cloak, cloak, if only I can touch that, how nice I can be healed. He's so powerful. And so she took every effort. She defied the crowd. She went beyond the obstacles of the crowd <coughs> to touch the hem of his cloak. And the story tells us she was healed immediately. Dear sisters and brothers, you're coming into church. Her faith was so courageous. How much of faith with which you have come into the church? How much of faith you have? There was a crowd during the time of this woman. There is a crowd around us all the time. Just before you entered the church, there may be some people around you who may be telling you who is celebrating Mass, how long the Mass is going to be, <coughs> if it is Father Xavier. And uh, maybe <coughs> you have other reasons, people telling you why go to church, same old thing. And so many other things will be telling you, people will be telling you a lot of noise around you. Sometimes it can happen in your own house, someone want to go to church, someone don't want to go to church, someone is tired, someone is lazy. And see a lot of people around in our own house and outside in our workplace. <laughs> the lot of talks about faith or no faith. Some people believe in God, some people don't believe in God. <coughs> so people justify, people philosophize. So all these are the crowds around us. <coughs> and you are here in the church amidst all that. So wonderful. But that doesn't tell me or tell you that you have so much of faith. You can come here because it's a day of obligation. Just imagine if it's not a day of obligation, probably half the church will be empty. And probably because you are free on a Sunday and some of you may feel, I feel good if I go to church. You know, kind of feeling. <coughs> the crowds outside giving us a lot of notions and understanding about faith, about our life. There is another crowd, there is another crowd which was not spoken of 50 years ago. This crowd is our handphone. There are millions of content in the handphone, TikTok, Facebook, this and that, lots of things. Now with AI, a lot of things in the phone that you may not filter what to see and what not to see, what to listen, what not to listen. And so all these things become the crowd that is clouding me every single day. And so these things tell me, even in the phone, there are a lot of things that debate about faith. And people got different interpretations about faith, different religions telling different things. So lots of things, lots of bombardment of the media, <coughs> that is a second form of crowd that is clouding us, that is crowding us. And so, dear sisters and brothers, the woman with courageous faith went beyond the crowd to touch Jesus. How about you and me? Are we, do we have the capacity, are we capable enough to go beyond this crowd's noise, both on the outside, both on the mechanical phone, and what is inside me? <coughs> that is the question that we have to ask ourselves, dear sisters and brothers. Now, 2 Corinthians verse 5, chapter 5, verse 7 tells us. But before I go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let us see Jairus, the second episode, the second event in the Bible today. <clears throat> he was a synagogue official, presumably a well-to-do man. Officials, you know, in the, in the rank of the Jewish uh, uh, context culture. He must have been a bit wealthy man. But this wealthy man went and knelt 
before Jesus pleading and begging him, Lord, please come, please come, my daughter is dying to heal her. And Jesus applauds his faith again. Do not worry, just have faith. Your faith will lead you. Have faith, he says to the man. Dear sisters and brothers, we are also rich in some ways. Some of you may have big fat bank account. Some of you have accumulated degrees. Some of you may have more than one house or more than one car. Most of us have today. It's no big deal today to have more cars. A lot of things we have, a lot of fine relationships, wonderful family and all that. These are the riches that we have, that we possess. Like Jairus, have we come and knelt before Jesus? Because my security is out there, my faith and trust in all those things, those possessions, those material things that I have, they give me security, they are the possessions that I own, and they give me that faith to live. And so we live by sight, by what we see around us. These things make me believe, I trust in this and this will bring me to God. We have a lot of passwords these days. Lots of things we use password. Dear sisters and brothers, all these passwords will not help me. They will help me to live this life here, to earn a living, to live life here. But they will not give me eternal life. But there's only one password for eternal life, one password, that is Jesus. That password is Jesus. And so, dear sisters and brothers, if you are celebrating today, it should be a celebration of faith. Faith is a celebration that you must celebrate every day. You know why? Because that one force that you have will make you celebrate. There was this man, he went to this guru and he told the guru, Guru, I have got many things but my life is in shambles. I don't feel happy. Very sad. So the guru gave him a rosebud. He gave him a rosebud and told him, now I want you to do one thing. Take this rosebud. Just let it bloom by opening the petals one by one. Just do it very gently. And so he opened the first petal. Wow. Second petal, fine. The third and the fourth petal, the petals begin to wither, begin to fall off, and he could not make it bloom. Eventually, the whole rose bud, which is supposed to become a, flower, a bloomed flower, did not happen. <clears throat> then the guru said, Now go out early morning to the rose garden, and you watch the buds, what's happening to them. They will bloom by themselves. They will bloom. Nobody has to touch them. With the sunlight and the rainwater sufficient. But there is a power. There is a power, power that is allowing it to bloom. That is the power of the divine. Look around you, dear sisters and brothers. The things around you, they manifest that power, that force. Look at nature. They manifest that force that they manifest the divine God. And so how about you? Looking at those things, will you be lacking in faith? How much more we have to draw faith from the divine God? The woman touched the hem of Jesus. You are capable of touching Jesus every day when you pray, when you read the Bible. But how many of us do that? And much more. Excuse me. And much more at every Mass when you come. You are not only touching Him, you are receiving Him. Only in faith you will see miracles happening in your life. Only you fa you, in faith you will see transformation taking place. How do we come and receive Him? I assure you, your faith will heal you. Your faith will change you. So, dear sisters and brothers, let us pray for this grace 
as 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 tells us do not walk by sight but walk by faith most of us we rely on everything that we see and we believe and we put and trust everything into that faith you don't have to see you have to experience and so dear sisters and brothers let us pray for this grace lord give me this faith increase my faith in you when i have greater faith i will love more when i have greater love i will have greater faith so dear sisters and brothers let us think about this and see where is my faith how is deep is my faith and where it is leading me to because what you have of the world in the world will give you the art of living in this world but in faith will give you eternal life amen